Good evening, everyone, and welcome to LSU Online's virtual open house. We're so happy that you've joined us. My name is Brittany Randall, and I'm the Assistant Director of Online Recruitment. Our panelists will introduce themselves shortly, and we will cover lots of information, but we will make sure that we leave enough time for you to ask questions as well. One important detail to share before we get started, when you are asking um, a question, please make sure to specify what campus and program you are referencing because we have some overlap between campuses and we want to make sure that we are providing accurate information to you um, and your specific questions. So once again, thank you for joining us and it is an honor and a pleasure to help you get started on your uh, journey with LSU Online. So now we'll have our panelists introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Jennifer Christina. I am the team lead of enrollment coaches for the graduate programs for the LSU campus. Good evening, everyone. My name is Remy Fontenot. I'm a student success coach team lead, and I work with LSUS, both with undergrad and graduate programs. Hello, my name is Scarlett. I am also a student success team lead. I work with the LSU a and campus, mostly with our business programs. Hi, I'm Jamaica Zodin. I work with LSU A as a student success coach with our Bachelor of Science in Accounting. Hi, my name is Callie Kitsimis. I am a student success coach at LSU a and I work with some undergrad and grad programs. Hello, my name is Lance Scott. I am an enrollment coach and I specifically work with the LSU a and campus undergrad, specifically with the Guild students. Hi, my name is Sharika Kelly, and I'm an enrollment coach team lead. I currently work with LSU at Alexandria, as well as LSU Health Sciences of New Orleans. Hi, I'm Michael Havneros. I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, enrollment coach team lead with uh, the LSUS campus, working with graduate programs there. And thank you, everyone. And here's what we'll be discussing this evening. So for our agenda, we'll discuss why choose LSU online, the flexibility of our online learning, the unmatched student support, your next steps, and then we'll open the floor for questions and answers. And of course, we'll share our contact information. So if you have any additional questions after this evening, you'll be able to reach out to us individually and collectively. So why LSU Online? Um, I'm an LSU Online graduate, so I may be extremely biased when I say this, but there's no place like LSU. So we'll play this video to show a quick overview as to why we're so special. Okay, so another reason uh, after what Brittany said about why LSU online and one of the biggest ones that we have to offer you uh, as a why, it would be the fact that we offer non-delineated degrees. So when you attend one of our campuses, you are fully enrolled as a student of that campus and you will graduate as one. So you get the same diploma, the same transcripts, the same curriculum, same faculty as all of our on-campus students. And when you graduate, you will be a full LSU or LSU A or LSU S graduate when you are finished. We uh, are now at over 8,400 students whose lives have changed and been part of Tiger Nation. Uh, our degrees that we offer are all 100% online. And all of that, like I said, is part of 150 years of academic excellence of LSU. And you're just as much a part of that as all of our students on our campuses. So some other key factors to consider when you're looking at our online programs. 
Um, we offer a flat rate for all online students. So you're not looking at any out of state fees, not any tech fees, anything. When you see our prices listed, that is a flat fee for everyone. Um, we have learning at every level for our students and an entry point for everyone. So all of our campuses provide different degrees. Um, we have two-year programs at our LSU Eunice campus. We've got four-year programs um, at several of our campuses, most of our campuses. And we also have graduate degrees at others. We have continuing education programs to enhance what you're learning in the classroom. So there is some place, uh, some kind of graduate or post-baccalaureate or some sort of certificate or graduate program for every single student. Uh, right now, LSU boasts over 250,000 alumni worldwide. And one of the neat things about being uh, an alumnus of LSU is that you get to be a part of the actual physical active LSU alumni chapters all over the world. And um, I've experienced that when I lived in Chicago. Um, every year there are crawfish boils and football watch parties and networking events, um, not only with LSU alumni, but with other SEC alumni as well. So that's something that you would be a part of as an LSU online graduate. So one of the other things that LSU online offers for students, and one thing to consider is that we can help you save some time and money on the entry of school. We offer transfer credits and also credits for prior learning. So there are a great number of trainings and certifications that if you have already established these in your careers, or you know if you've had military training, that can count as classroom work, both at the undergraduate and the graduate level. So talk to your enrollment coach, which you have a lot of, of choices here today, but talk to someone about what the program you're considering may be able to take from your, pri your prior experience in the workforce. And as you heard us all mention when we came on today, we have campuses um, across the state and we're all part of the LSU system and every online program is part of LSU online. So we have the LSU, the main campus in Baton Rouge, uh, and you might hear some people refer to that as A&M. LSU is an, an agricultural mechanical college. Um, LSU A is our Alexandria campus. LSU E is our Eunice campus. LSU S is our Shreveport campus. And then we have health sciences centers at both New Orleans and Shreveport. So now I will let you guys know about the flexibility of online learning. Our courses are designed with you in mind. So you are in control of your learning experience, whether you have a busy work, life, or family schedule. You do not have to log in at a specific time to complete your coursework. While there are still weekly deadlines and assignments, there is the flexibility for you to complete them on your schedule. Whether you're looking to transition to a new field or advance in your current career, our courses are designed to help you upskill and learn in demand skills for the career that you want all on your own time. With LSU Online, you can get that promotion, become a leader within your organization, and increase your earning potential for your family. And we'd love it if you'd let us help you accomplish your goals. So something that we do that's a bit unique is our unmatched student support. Everyone here on this call is available throughout the process to help you. And I will let Jennifer walk you through what our enrollment coaches can do for you. Okay, as you can see here, we have enrollment coaches from a lot of our campuses. And a little bit about what you'll get from the first time you talk to someone at LSU Online. And if you can just, if you even just get to one of us directly. Um, we're here to support you through the application process and through the admissions process. So kind of what that looks like, um, we'll talk to you about, you know, the program you're considering or your options for programs that you're considering. We'll talk to you about what the admissions requirements are for that degree, if there are any prerequisites and, you know, what kind of GPA or test scores or anything that would be needed for entry, what that looks like for you. We'll actually be able to walk you through the application itself. We'll get you a link to the application. We'll help you navigate that and make sure that you get your best application forward. So we help you with deadlines and we help you with completing the application, knowing what to do and what you don't need to do. 
um, and just really making sure that everything's on time, everything's complete, and that you've put forth all the best information that you can for the best chance for admission. Um, so we'll talk to you about documents that you need, transcripts that need to be sent to LSU or uploaded, and then we'll get you started on the path to financial aid. So we'll get you started as far as filling out your FAFSA, getting LSU's college code, and starting the process that your student success coach will help you with once you're admitted as well. Just to be a little bit prepared for your first call uh, with an enrollment coach, the kind of questions we might ask you to gauge where you are in the process and which program is right for you uh, would be your motivation. What's your why? You know, um, what, why do you need to do this degree at this time? Uh, we'll talk to you about your academic background. Um, so we'll look at what you've done previously, whether it's to transfer in um, as an undergraduate student or what you did in undergraduate work for applying for a master's program. Um, and we'll also talk to you a little bit about how you look, you're, you're, you know, starting the process of, you know, what you want to do to pay for this program. Do you have employer reimbursement? Do you have um, military funding? Do you, you know, plan on filling out a FAFSA or do you have some other kind of setup just to get the ball rolling and for you to start thinking about that? Uh, and then we'll talk to you about what our start dates are and talk to you about when to get that application in, what the deadlines are, and when you need to start preparing for that, even if you're finishing up a program right now or you're not looking to do that for quite some time. So we'll get you set up for success from the get-go and be there with you through the whole enrollment process. So once you are admitted, you will be assigned a student success coach. Our team serves as support for you while you are a student. So from the time that you are admitted until you walk across the stage at graduation, we will be a point of contact for you and the different departments on campus since you can't physically be here. We can help you get connected with academic support, technical support if you're having trouble logging into Moodle or your student email. We'll remind you about registration and we'll also give you encouragement during finals week. So you've heard a lot from us and now we'll let you hear from some of our graduates. I would tell anyone um, considering enrolling in LSU online to do it. There are so many resources out there. You never feel alone. The people were really friendly when I applied. The whole program itself was great. My professors have been wonderful. Like it's been an immediate, okay, you let me know what you need. I have the fulfillment of being a part of organizations on campus. I have been able to join in as a college student. We are just one big family. Okay, so we've talked to you a little bit about what it's like to get started, and we're going to answer more questions you have about your next steps. And obviously, your enrollment coach for the program you're considering um, is who can tell you the specifics. But some of the next things that you'll be looking at, um, you can start your application now at online.lsu.edu slash application. Uh, you will be submitting transcripts for every school you have attended in most cases. And you'll talk about testing requirements if any are needed, other documentation you may need, um, start your financial aid process, and wait for your admissions decision, which is something your enrollment coach will help you with as well. Here are some important dates, and you'll see that the application deadline and start dates vary depending on which campus you're applying. Um, you don't have to worry about memorizing or taking a picture or even writing down these dates because you will get a recording of tonight's open house and a PDF of the presentation so that you can refer back. The dates shown are for our spring terms uh, across the uh, campuses, but if you want to see any future terms and dates, um, you will be able to do so at the link shown at the bottom of the screen once you receive the copy of your webinar, uh, of course. So we will start opening the floor for uh, questions and answers in just a second, but I also wanted to share the main contact information with you. So the 833 number will connect you with anyone on the team and we're open from 
7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. And you can also reach out to us via email at lsuonline at lsu.edu or even on the web website where you can chat with us. So I'll keep this screen open as we go through the questions so that you can have the contact information for our panelists um, from this evening. But again, when you are asking questions, we want to just make sure that you specify what program and campus so that we can give you the best details as possible. So I have the first question here from Corey. It says, what is the cost of the LSU SMBA program much more affordable than the LSU program? Also, why are there two less course requirements at LSU S? So Michael, I see that you want to answer that question on live. Yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> this is a variation of a question we get asked a lot. Um, basically, there are, as Jennifer said earlier, um, several campuses within the LSU network uh, of uh, institutions. They are, we are a family, but we do set our own policies and uh, um, create our own programs. And the way that is all administered and delivered differs per campus. So that's gonna be reflected in uh, the time to completion, the number of credit hours, the, uh, the cost, different faculty, um, there's a number of factors that play into that, but basically what I always say as a kind of general answer to that question is look first at uh, the course content and whether that aligns with your goals. If it does align, then obviously you have um, a, uh, a, a cost maximum, uh, um, you know, a price range, uh, see if that aligns as well. Either way, we don't push you in a particular direction. Our goal is to find the program that's best for you. Um, so let us know whether it's LSUS or MBA uh, or uh, LSU for the MBA. Um, one of us will assist you directly. And thank you, Michael. And we have another question from Susan, she says, how does this program help you with future career development? How do you assist students wanting to find a job after? So um, with that being said, it's not specific to a, a particular campus, but if any one of our panelists want to uh, answer that question, please feel free. I can do that as well. Um, I talk about this a lot with people. Um, there, there's so many options. There are career services offices within all of the campuses. So Obviously, it depends on the program. Um, as far as career development goes, uh, Jennifer also mentioned uh, alumni groups. Uh, that's a big deal, both uh, um, during and after your studies. And then more informally, there are uh, Facebook groups, uh, LinkedIn uh, groups, uh, group me's within various programs, people very much form cohorts within cohorts and groups and families and network with one another. So um, you'll get a lot of assistance directly uh, and formally through uh, the campuses, but also um, from the students you are studying with. And just to add on to what Michael shared, um, I work closely with the A&M campus. So I know there are different uh, job boards that they you can sign up as a student. Uh, there's interview prep, there's job fairs, career fairs. So there's many different things that you will be able to utilize as a student as well to help with your career. And we have a question from Amy. It says program online master's of MBA, I'm sorry, online master of business administration with the project management concentration. Michael question. Yeah. Um, if you want specific information about that, I would say make a note of my information um, and give me a call or shoot me an email today or tomorrow. I'll uh, reach out uh, very promptly. I do want to mention that the deadline for a January start, if that's something you're interested in, is next Monday, the 4th. So um, the application is pretty simple, but reach out to me. I'll be happy to help. Okay, and we have a lot of Shreveport questions for you today, Michael. <laughs> so in average, how long would it take to complete an EDD in leadership? What is the capstone requirement for this type of degree? 
Okay, so time to completion at 63 credit hours. So somewhere between two and a half and three and a half years would be typical, um, depending on whether you are part time all the way, full time all the way, uh, whether you mix it up. Uh, there is uh, the final 15 credit hours are either a dissertation or a group research project. Um, that's something you would discuss with your advisor within the program. Um, again, uh, with regards to that program, uh, reach out to, uh, um, to myself or someone else within the LSUS team. I'm happy to answer those uh, questions in more detail. And the next deadline for that program is February 9th, slightly different from the other one. Okay, and we have a question about the Bachelor of Science with the concentration in forensic science. It says, what are the requirements to be accepted and looking for to be uh, accepted into the LSU A&M online? That would be a question I can answer here. So as far as any of our um, A&M undergrad programs, um, as depending on if you're coming in as a transfer student or first time freshman, um, transfer students have to meet at least a minimum um, 30 credits transferable and a cumulative 2.5 GPA. If you are coming in as a first time freshman, they do look at your high school transcript and generally they look at it at 3.0 or higher if you're looking to be accepted. Thank you, Lance. I was going to answer a question about um, selective service really quickly. Um, okay. That pertains to uh, um, men between the ages of 18 and 26 off the top of my head um, specifically. So that refers to uh, if the draft were to be reintroduced, then you had registered at age 18 um, for that um, as a male. Uh, um, so uh, you can either indicate yes to that or no. Uh, according to whatever the case may be, uh, but it's uh, not going to affect your application. Um, it's just a question that has to be in there. Thank you, Michael. And I see we have a question about the program for Salesforce Administrator Career Certificate, and you're looking to uh, find more information about that. That's actually through our continuing education. So uh, we're actually discussing the degree programs, but I'll flip back to this previous screen where you can call the main number that 833-280-5634 and you will be connected with an enrollment coordinator from there you can tell them that you're looking for um, continuing education for that program in particular and then they can connect to you with an enrollment coach that can give you specifics And we have another question um, from Melissa. It says, for construction management post-grad program, how much do you pay per semester? I would have to look that up. I think uh, it depends on if you're looking at the post-baccalaureate or the master's degree in construction management, which I think someone else had just put, put in that they were interested in the construction management master. So very quickly, I just wanted to let all of you know that are interested in these programs. Uh, as we said in the in the presentation, we do have entry points for everyone. Um, and we have undergraduate certificates and bachelor's in construction management. For, but for those of you who have already graduated with the bachelor's, usually in something else, then the options for you are to either complete a post-baccalaureate certificate in construction management, um, which would be 18 hour, upper hour, upper level hours from the actual undergraduate degree uh, to supplement your, your bachelor's that you already have. Um, that can be used to either move into the workforce and construction management, or it can be used uh, basically as prerequisites for the master's program. Um, if you, however, graduated in construction management um, and have that bachelor's or have extensive um, experience in the construction field, then you would be able to move into the master's program. Uh, Brittany, I think it's about 830 per credit hour. I wanna say your classes are going to be somewhere around $2,400 a piece. Um, for the post-baccalaureate program, it's about 325. Uh, so you're looking at probably closer to a thousand per class. Um, but if you have questions, please um, email me and I can send you all the information on all of those programs.
Okay, thank you. And we have a question from Tyler. It says, as far as the LSU online MBA program, is there a GMAT waiver based on students' undergrad GPAs or is it required? Um, right now, the GMAT and GRE um, are both waived for our MBA program. Uh, in fact, I would say they're waived essentially for all of our programs if you have a high enough GPA. Uh, so generally speaking, the entry point for our master's programs is a 3.0 in your undergraduate work. Uh, if that is the case and you're coming in under what we would consider regular admission and not probationary admission, then I don't think we have a single program right now that requires that you have a GRE or, or GMAT. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in that right now. Uh, and you asked about the waiver. Generally speaking, what we have students do is apply without it. And if for some reason the department would like to see uh, further proof of uh, readiness for the program, then there's a possibility they'll ask you for it. But generally speaking, um, it's either the GPA um, or your experience. Okay, thank you again, Jennifer. And we have a question from Latoya. Uh, she's asking if there are any additional enrollment coaches that she can speak with because her current one is out of office. But her main question is, why is the tuition price different between LSU main campus and LSU S? And is the education the same? I know we uh, touched on that just a, a while ago, but if we want to go into a little bit more detail, just to make sure that um, it's clear. All right. So Michael took it the first time, so I'll take it the second time. Um, so what you're looking at is two totally different schools. We're all in the same system and all of our programs are under LSU online. Um, LSU Shreveport um, is, you know, one of our satellite campuses um, and it's a smaller campus. So what you're paying for in a difference is the resources allotted to our students while they're in the program. So because LSU Shreveport has, first of all, their program is, is a little bit shorter. And I think someone spoke to that. I don't know. Um, it, if Michael answered that, but that was part of the question. Uh, yeah, then, it's 30 credit hours versus 36 for LSU. Correct. Uh, and, it, and it also can go a little bit more quickly. Uh, students generally do take two classes per term and fin can finish in 10 months to a year. Whereas with the LSU MBA, you're looking at more 18 months to 24 months. Um, but you're, you know, we're, you know, a research one university. We pull in faculty uh, at a certain level. And we also have resources for our students. So that's, you know, millions of dollars in investments and databases for students for research and for, you know, writing your papers in the library. That's our career center and all of the um, resources you have with that, whether it's job coaching or databases of jobs and all of those things. So it's really, you're looking at two different schools. So instead of saying uh, they're not the same programs at all, they come from different you know, LSU has its College of Business and LSU Shreveport has its College of Business. Uh, the programs are different. If you look, you'll see that there are different courses listed. Um, so the difference in price is coming from what's behind it. Um, and they are both accredited fully regionally um, and they are both accredited um, at the same level. Um, gosh, why can't I think of the letters, Michael, the letters? AACSB, they both have AACSB accreditation. Correct. So what we talk about um, when students call and are looking at the difference between two programs is what is your driving factor? What, what's really behind what you're trying to do? If um, if you're looking for, you know, if your driving factors are um, speed and or cost, then you can't do any better than LSU Shreveport. Um, if you're looking to move more into an executive level, LSU is, is more of an executive MBA. Um, ours is also tailorable from within with concentrations or excuse me, specializations and um, electives, whereas LSU Shreveport has their MBAs broken up externally into concentrations. So it's just a matter of which program is more attractive to you, uh, what your timeline is like, what your budget is like, and you know what you're looking to do with that degree when you finish. Okay, and we have um, two other MBA questions, so I'm just going to loop them together. So one is asking, would the VA office on campus be able to answer if the GI Bill can be used for an online MBA? And then a second part is, if someone has a PMP certification, would that count towards a PLA for them? Yes. 
So all of our campuses have veterans affairs offices uh, and they can all assist you with getting your resources together from the military for your funding and utilizing that for our online degrees. We accept uh, military funding for all of our programs. So that's definitely something that we can consider. Um, with the LSU MBA, yes, a PMP is a prior learning assessment credit um, for the program. Um, LSU Shreveport, because it is a smaller program and has a, a lower price point, does not accept transfer credits or prior learning assessment credits. Um, but you're, you're generally looking at the difference between you know credits that would be accepted and that 30 hours and 36 hours anyway. Okay, and we have an MSW question. So for the MSW program, I would like to know how often the classes meet. How do I get information on class schedules? Okay, so all of our classes, and this is my fault for not getting into detail on this when we were presenting, uh, our classes are not only 100% online, they're also 100% asynchronous. So that includes our MSW, but there is not a time that you have to be logged in for a specific class time. So if there are lectures that are recorded, um, generally speaking, by Monday morning, you have all your resources and your assignments um, given to you, and the bulk of the work is probably going to be due on the weekend, um, but there is not a time that you have to meet. I'd like to answer the leadership studies question. Okay. Uh, can you read um, that question, Michael, first? Yeah. How difficult is the admission process for the um, EDD leadership program? Um, it is not difficult per se. It is um, a lot of effort needs to be made on the purpose statement side of things because it is a very competitive program. That's the main point to make. So a lot of weight is placed by the department on uh, your statement of purpose because the assumption is that you're already coming, um, and I see doctor in your title, um, you're already coming with uh, significant credentials. So the assumption is those are there uh, and to make you competitive, uh, your your story, your research goals and interests are gonna be key. Um, so competitive program, but uh, very much encourage you to, uh, to contact me and uh, talk about that further. Okay, and I have an international question for um, the Baton Rouge campus. It says that their master's is from the University of Oklahoma, but they have an undergrad from a foreign university, uh, which does not send transcripts directly. So how would they apply? So generally speaking for that, um, your will need transcripts that are international in origin to be evaluated, to have them translated not just into English if they're not in English to start with, but also to American education standards uh, and our grade point average scales and things like that. Um, so usually there is an evaluation service. Um, I know a lot of people use WES. Um, school, if a school will send those transcripts there, um, they can get evaluations done and then the evaluation service can get the transcripts to us. But that's something you can talk to an enrollment coach um, about generally speaking, um, you know, to apply you for LSU, you only need unofficial transcripts. So if you happen to have copies of those, uh, we can work later on down the line for after your admission on what to do with transcripts that you just can't get in the official capacity. Okay, thank you. And Lance, if you can answer uh, this particular question, it says, does LSU accept CLEP credits? So for our, our online admissions, um, it's generally not required that you have to send those over. But if you choose to add that to your admissions, um, mainly they really just look at your transcripts, essentially. But if you have CLEP scores that you want to add to kind of help, you know, with your admissions, you're more than welcome to send them over. Thank you. And the next question says, can I get experience credit toward my MBA for 20 plus years of work in accounting field to reduce course requirements? I was actually answering that uh, <laughs> um, in writing, but it's okay. Um, 
Ellen, Jennifer can probably speak to this in more detail for LSU, but with regards to LSUS, it won't directly make a difference, um, but it depends on your GPA. Um, for example, if your if your undergraduate GPA were uh, between a 2.5 and a 2.99, then your work experience would absolutely make a big difference in terms of your being accepted or not. Um, Jennifer, can you take LSU for that one? Yeah, so it's not going to count as credit unless you have actual certifications, uh, and there are a great number of them um, that start everywhere from military to, um, you know, the PMP, um, their banking and all kinds of different um, certifications that can work towards credit. But as far as admissions, yes, that is going to be um, a very big factor, uh, especially with the LSU MBA. Um, Technically, they're looking for three years of experience for entry. And I'm, I'm actually typing a, a, an answer right now as well that was talking about um, the difference between an exec, the executive MBA at LSU and the LSUS MBA. And Michael can answer this a little bit too, but um, the LSU MBA technically has a, a three-year work requirement for entry. They will waive that or be flexible with that depending on a GPA. But for the most part, it is for people who are looking to advance further um, after having been in the workforce for a while. Um, and, you know, I know that at LSU Report, a lot of people who are coming straight out of college also go into it, but they have people coming in who are doing the same thing that the LSU MBA students are doing as well as, as advancing their careers later in life. Um, I'd just like to speak a tiny bit to the executive MBA um, label, just uh, as, as a thing generally. Um, the an executive MBA tends to, to uh, pertain to uh, programs that are designed to work around people in executive functions. So it's not necessarily it's it, it's often a structural thing more than it is uh, um, you know the title per se. So so LSU. Um, as you'll see on the comparison page, um, which we linked to earlier, um, tends to be uh, um, attended more by people in executive functions, but it's not called an executive MBA, right? LSU's MBA is considered an executive MBA. But it's not actually called that. It, 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 it isn't is. referred to as that. It, it or is. is it? It is. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I learned something new. <laughs> Um, there was one question that was uh, answered via the chat, but I think it is worth mentioning right now. So, Sharika, I know you answered it, so I'll, I'll call on you. But the question was, what was considered full-time versus part-time for online? So if you want to kind of share those details, Sharika. So with being full-time, you can take one class or two classes and still be considered a full-time student online as long as you are enrolled in classes. If you choose to take a break, then you're considered a part-time student. And at LSU A, you're only allowed to take two classes at a time and you'll still be considered full-time. I know there's a, a question about um, social work. Uh, oh, yeah, and, I was just going to read oh, that one. So good, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> About so sorry, I, I jumped the gun um, because I, I was looking something up on it. But um, one thing to say about our social work degree is that it is a generalist program. Um, so as far as the PPS are having any kind of concentration, um, that is not part of the online program. So the in-class content uh, gears towards a generalist program so that you get a broad understanding and education in the field as a whole, where they want you to focus in on your concentration or your intended field is in your field internship. And so for that, that's why you have pretty complete autonomy in what you choose and where you choose to do that. You'll have a field coordinator that backs you and helps you in the process, but you will be able to choose for yourself what you want to do. And their hope is that that is how you kind of establish your concentration is by doing the work physically. 
Okay, thank you. And Michael, we have one more EDD um, question. It says, do EDD classes run August to December? Um, and they apologize if you answered that earlier. Uh, no, I didn't answer that earlier. Um, they don't uh, run August to December. They they have the same structure as um, all of our graduate programs, certainly. Um, basically, seven-week terms. Uh, you can look at it as a half semester with one week off in between. Um, so uh, it runs all year, um, with the exception, of course, of the end of the year where you have about a month off, more or less. Thank you. And another question says, what if you started college but haven't been in a few years? Do those credits stay good and can it be carried over to online classes? So, um, Generally speaking, undergraduate credits do not expire. Um, so I went back to school personally. Uh, I started LSU and went back 20 years later and went to LSU online to finish my bachelor's degree. And those credits were all sitting there waiting for me. Now that is different for graduate degrees. Uh, generally speaking, after five years, graduate credits do expire. So um, if you're looking to you know, transfer credits that you've done even quite some time ago into a bachelor's program, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, and we have a question that says, who can I get in touch with for the construction management program? I didn't mean to answer that live. <laughs> but if it's for the undergraduate program, you can reach out to Lance Scott, who's on this call, or if it's the post uh, or the post baccalaureate program. Um, and then if it's the master's degree in construction management, you can reach out to me. Um, I'll answer the uh, international certification question. Um, it, I just looked up the CIPD. Um, I, I, I have heard of that. Um, now, now that I've Googled it, I remember it. Um, basically, you, uh, you need to apply to a program uh, and if the certification or uh, um, course of study that you've taken is considered college level credit, then um, you will uh, that will be flagged, as it were. Uh, um, oh, that makes it sound uh, bad. But basically, the application will tell you you need an international credential evaluation for that uh, certification. If it's not considered college level uh, um, learning, then it will typically not be required. Um, in terms of whether it uh, um, is accepted as credit towards a program, again, that's going to depend on the uh, the certification itself, and then the program department makes the determination whether or not it's uh, acceptable. So for human resources, um, since the MBA in human resources does not accept transfer or, excuse me, prior learning assessment credits, uh, if you were looking at the Masters of Leadership in Human Resource Development, uh, there are three pages worth of lists of PLAs and certifications that are accepted. Uh, if the CIPD is the equivalent of one in the States, um, I think that's something that could be assessed. Um, and I, I can get you a contact for someone who may be more familiar with that particular certification, um, but also, you know, it may be a matter of, of how transferable it is, um, but being human resources like that, that's definitely something that we will assess for you. And Jennifer, thank you for that, and, and Michael as well. But I know Jennifer wants to answer that next question as well about does everyone fall underneath the Tiger family? Okay, so you can tell already there's some friendly competition between all of our programs, especially the ones that overlap. Um, we are all part of the LSU system, but each campus is separate. And as such, each campus has its own mascot. So uh, for LSU, the main campus in Baton Rouge, we are the Tigers. Michael, for the Shreveport um, mascot, what have you got there? We are the pilots. Okay, we are not so the Tigers. You're the pilots. Tigers are cool, but pilots are cool too. Sarika, what out. do you have for LSU A and LSU E? Go Generals. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, actually, LSU E is. Let's the see. Form of what tigers, is e? right? Are they the Bengals? They're Bengals. The yeah, they're the Bengals. Yes. Okay, okay, so. mm -hmm. yes. okay. So go, Generals. Come on over. <laughs> 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 okay. 
that was I a mean, fun Bengals question. Bengals and I loved Tigers, it. just saying. <laughs> they, they are. <laughs> Shreveport also has a really fun uh, mascot that's a river monster and it's green and yep. furry. Look mm-hmm. that one up if you want to. We have we have Rev the River Monster. <laughs> he's fun, kind of like the Philly Fanatic or something. Yeah, he's something. And for those of you who don't know, maybe this person who asked this question does know, but LSU has a live Bengal tiger on its campus between the football stadium and the basketball arena. So if you're ever in Baton Rouge, come by and see it. Um, so take a take a look at Mike the Tiger. You can also find him, uh, his live webcam online. If you just Google Mike the Tiger live webcam, you'll be able to see our, our mascot. Okay. And we have another MSW question. It says for MSW, for the MSW program, is testing provided online or at a designated site? So online, our testing will be done online. Some of our programs, um, and this all varies, uh, do offer online proctoring for the exams. Uh, Some, you know, they're more uh, an open book kind of thing, Um, but there are different ways to do that. But there's never a time you have to go to a specific testing site, um, even for the Masters of Social Work. So it looks like we have one of the Bengals um, ECs on, (laughs) and she wanted everyone to know that they don't accept credits past 10 years. So that would be LSU Eunice Campus. All right, Lisa, thank, thank you, you for Lisa. that one. <laughs> Although it, she did, the way she worded it, it sounded like that wasn't necessarily a hard no. <laughs> okay. Which I think sometimes with E, um, it may be a workaround. But if you have questions, interested in our Eunice campus, reach out to me and I can get you hooked up with Miss Lisa Lindsay. <laughs> Uh, somebody did ask if, if they go to LSU A&M to do activities, even though, can they go to LSU uh, A&M to do activities, even though they're enrolled at LSU E? So for our students, um, and I'm not sure exactly what activities you're looking at, um, for our students, and I can speak to the main campus, what's available to students, but, you know, you have access to our library, you have access um, to some sporting events, you'll each campus, you'll be able to get a, a student ID for that campus. Um, but as far as like attending sporting events for LSU, if you're an LSU E student, then no, those are two different schools with two different athletic programs um, and student involvement. Um, but there are plenty of things that you can do on campus. Um, just walk up to, nobody's going to stop you from attending Fall Fest or any of our other activities on campus. So if you really want to come and visit campus or, you know, be a part of something here, uh, there is opportunity for that. And if you don't think you have an LSU campus, you don't you don't need one uh, right off the bat, depending on what you want to study. We You can talk to one of us and we can have, kind of help you find which campus and which programs might work best for you. Um, and remember, even though we're talking about all of these campuses, you never have to step foot on one of these campuses. The only time we'd really like for you to do that is for graduation, because you will attend the graduation ceremony of whichever campus uh, you finish your program in. And he also has another question that how do you um, know when the, I guess the application is ready for the, the spring semester or term? So with each campus, there are different application deadlines and due dates. So once you kind of decide which direction you want to go in, then we can give you specific dates to um, align with that. But they're coming up quickly. And I do want to mention that even though we, we have a lot of dates up for you and we've put some of them up, uh, for instance, for LSU, the deadline is technically December 18th. However, LSU closes on the 21st. So if you are able to get your applications in as soon as possible, then we're going to be able to get you further along in the process before we break for the holidays. So even though technically your applications need to be submitted by December 18th, if you can get that done faster, then um, definitely we can we can take care of you um, further along in the process before we break for the holidays. Or you can um, email me. I, I think we're up on the 
the um, main page right now with our contact information. And I can get you a link to um, all of our local chapters for alumni events. And that's something no matter where you are um, and no matter which campus you're a part of, uh, those alumni events, and I, I'm almost positive on this, but Michael, all of our campuses when they graduate are part of the LSU Alumni Network, correct? Um, my understanding is not automatically, but everyone has a right to join. Okay, sure. But as far as alumni events, uh, in this case, you do not have to be an active member in the Alumni Association um, because I wasn't and I definitely attended some. Um, but anybody can attend those events. So if you're an LSU Shreveport student and you want to go to the Boston football watch party or crawfish boil in the spring, then you can absolutely do that. And if you would like to uh, email me, then I can get you a link to um, the website for all of our different programs. And usually they have their dates for crawfish boils already posted for the spring and all kinds of things ready to go for you. Okay, and there was a question regarding, um, will there be a Zoom recording sent out via email? Um, just to touch on that again, yes. So the email that you register with so that you can attend this event this evening, um, you will receive the presentation as well as the webinar recording. And we have a question from Christy. So does the online Flores differ at all from any normal online program? Um, she's confused as to what it is exactly. No, uh, it is uh, a standard online MBA. Uh, and it's, it's part of the options for MBAs out of the College of Business at LSU. So with that... To get an MBA from LSU, you can do it in about five or six different ways. You can do it fully online, fully on campus, a uh, hybrid version. Um, there are different kinds of ways that you can do that, but it is still the same curriculum. It is still the same core coursework. Um, and like Michael said, um, both our programs are AACSB accredited. So, you know, they're part of, of that accrediting body as well. And um, that, you know, set of regulations for what an MBA needs to consist of. I was typing this, but I know we do have a few MSW students on the call, so I'll just say it that the uh, somebody asked if the MSW if they if they still could start in January, and if you saw that list of application deadlines, uh, that is the only program we're not admitting for spring one at this point. Uh, the application deadline for MSW is always the start date of the term before, so um, to start January fifteenth, you would have had to have applied by October eighteenth. So right now. Um, our start date for spring one is January 15th, and that is the deadline for the March start date. So it's always about two months before. So right now you would have to wait till spring two that starts in March for social work. That core badge question, I was doing a little research on the side. I know that they do something with that at LSUA um, based on information on the website. So I would just reach out to one of us tomorrow have us look into it further. But thank you, everyone is asking some really detailed and uh, specific questions. Uh, so just keep them coming. We actually have a few more minutes. And also while we're waiting, I just want to go back to this original screen too, where uh, you can call us at 833-280-5634 um, Monday through Friday. You can also email us at LSU online at lsu.edu. And you can find more specific details about each program in each campus on our <laughs> website, online.lsu.edu. And even from there, you're able to start chats with us where we can answer your questions as you're revealing that information. Oh, and uh, uh, while we're uh, waiting on further questions, just a quick reminder that for LSUS, the deadline for graduate applications is, and well, undergrad and grad, is uh, next Monday, December 4th. So if you did want to start classes January 15th, apply today, or at least, you know, as soon as possible, tomorrow is better than uh, a deadline day. So uh, reach out to myself or one of my coworkers uh, for LSUS programs. 
Okay, uh, and good. we have I'm one sorry. more question that came through. It says, for the MSW program, do the letters of reference need to be uploaded with the application or sent directly to a specific department? Good question. All right. So, and this is for all, so MSW is a little bit different, but for all LSU graduate programs um, for the main campus, um, your recommendations are requested through the application portal. So there's a tab there uh, that says recommendations. You open it, put in the contact information of the three people you'd like to be your recommenders. Uh, in the case of social work, they receive a form to fill out about you uh, and then instructions to fill that out and send it back to us so that that automatically attaches to your application. Uh, the process is very similar for the other programs that require recommendations as well. So they will just receive a request for an, a letter to be written. Um, but for social work, it's not even a letter, it's a form. Uh, you type out who you want in your application and they just get that form to fill out about you. Okay, thank you so much. So we'll have that as our last question for this evening. And I just want to say thank you again for joining us. This is our actual last open house for this year. So we hope that you enjoy this holiday season uh, with your families, but always feel free to reach out if you have any more specific questions and have a great evening.